Samsung Galaxy Note 2 is Samsung's second attempt at finding the middle ground between phone and a tablet. The Note 2 is predominantly plastic, just like the rest of the range of Galaxy devices. This is a little off-putting when compared to the likes of Apple's high-quality materials they tend to use. That said, the Note 2 doesn't scratch too easily. It's quite cumbersome. I have managed to drop it a number of times. However, it is uh, fairly tough and rigid. The device has a few differences in the design from the Samsung Galaxy S3. Nothing major, obviously, aside from the screen. Uh, they've moved the speaker towards the bottom of the back, away from beside the camera here. And uh, the edges are a little more squared. But at 180 grams, the Note 2 is quite a bit heavier than the S3, which is only 133 grams. In the back here, after we delicately rip off the back cover, we see that the Note 2 has a beefy 1300 milliamp hour battery, and that outclasses the S3's 2100 milliamp hour battery. There's a micro SD card and a, a micro SIM as well that goes in there. Uh, this is a fantastic battery for getting through a couple of days' use uh, at sort of mid canny usage. Uh, for heavy use, uh, you can always get about a day out of it and then some. Reattaching the back cover is just as graceful as getting it off in the first place. There is a 1280 by 720 pixel screen, however the 267 PPI density pales in comparison to the S3's 305 PPI. That said, it's still gorgeous. The Galaxy Note 2 will ship with 16, 32 or 64 gigabytes of onboard storage. It also has a micro SD card that accepts up to 64 gigabytes. It's important to point out that unless you root the device, you will not be able to move apps across to the SD card. So if you get the 16 gigabyte option uh, and a few top end games, you'll be fighting for space. Of course, the big sell of the Galaxy Note is this S Pen. It's, uh, it, it can be, I suppose, a, a little bit of a novelty. Um, I, I, for one, am not the biggest fan of it. I, I don't use it as much as I'd like to. It's quite a quite a learning curve to be able to get used to it. Um, I'm uh, still uh, trying to find places in my life to be able to use it at all times. But at that, you know, I only take it out of the actual casing of the phone two or three times, maybe a week. It's, uh, it's a nice alternative to have and it's a hark back to the old styluses that we used to love so much back in the days of Windows Mobile and some of the early Nokia touchscreen phones. Uh, just here I'm making a note on uh, what exactly I should be doing over the next few days. Uh, it it kind of keeps it in check. You know, people tend to use the touchpad uh, on the phone quite effectively, but uh, being able to record your thoughts in bad handwriting for some might be quite useful. For others like me, it, it's, it's cryptic. I often look back at my writing on here and think, what was I talking about? Even there, uh, the, the graffiti style... Uh, detection of what letters and what words it is I'm typing isn't really all that great. It's it's having a trouble picking up my handwriting. And it actually turns out to be slightly easier to hit the buttons with the actual S Pen itself. The S Pen does have a nice little feature where it, you hover over a button and it'll show uh, exactly what that button does. So it makes it a little easier for you to work out exactly what it is you're doing. The drawing tools on the on the phone are, are kind of handy to have. It, it does mean that you can uh, edit documents and uh, underline things where you might not have been able to do so quite accurately before. Here I'm drawing a lovely picture of a of a strange little man with a big big nose and some eyes, and that's about the extent of the uh, drawing capabilities that I will ever explore. Uh, the other day I did take a picture of a program and highlight a few words and things that I wanted someone else to see. Uh, the nice thing is that you can erase this and you can also record the, uh, the whole experience as you're creating a document and then play it back so you can see how you originally got to, uh, to a point. That's something we've seen HTC manage to do before and the, the last note was capable of doing it as well. Here I'm hovering over the various functions and uh, it's kind of nice that if you don't exactly know what you're doing you can just hover and it'll tell you. There's uh, 
bit of a tutorial here and what to do and this is a novel feature uh, you can scroll up and down by just hovering near enough at the divider line between the text and the the top of the panel it's kind of a funky little addition that you sometimes didn't expect the S Pen itself is very nicely crafted it's a big improvement over the last note it, it's quite long it's it looks like the most robust this is the button here that allows you to uh, flip between functions and then at the top some people have said that this is a like a rubber nipple but it's not quite it's a it's more of a plasticky thing but there's a bit of give in it so it's not going to scratch your screen unless you stab it particularly hard and it just slots back in there quite nicely whenever you pull the stylus in and out of the device it uh, activates things but the note taking thing is, is not the only uh, implementation of the S Pen that they have you, uh, they've uh, taken the opportunity to put together a rather nice uh, collection of bits and bobs that you can uh, mess around with for example uh, this camera utensil here allows you to take some fun pictures and then you can edit them with your S Pen. If I take a picture of the, the Galaxy Nexus there, I can apply certain filters to it, nothing new there, but you can highlight a brush and then you can apply a different filter to a certain area of the photograph. Uh, this has been done with uh, various other applications over the years, but uh, not with the high degree of accuracy that you can attain using the S Pen. So it can allow you to do certain nicer things uh, that might seem a little bit more professional. That's a bit more obvious what exactly is happening here. But some people will find this a, a fun or a slightly more productive way to be able to treat pictures and things. You can share it and you can save it and you can apply a nice frame. You know, so a nice frame always makes a difference. Lovely, very snowy. Of course, you can also play back uh, media on the device, which is the other big part of this device. is It's media centered to, uh, for example, here I'm watching a video of the phone show, and you can do the, it's almost like picture in picture on the TV. Uh, because it's got such a massive screen, it seems a bit of a shame to, uh, to waste the screen at all times. So you can uh, reduce the size of it and uh, be a little more productive whilst you're playing away with it but uh, not, not also that you can uh, you can mess around with the actual video itself with the S Pen say for example I stopped it here on Mr. Litchfield I press the button and I click here and it takes a screenshot of it I don't know why I jumped a few screens or a few frames ahead there but uh, I can now start to edit Mr. Litchfield and add in that moustache and, and beard that he's he's always been looking for it and uh, it's a good look for him yep yeah, yep yeah, that looks perfect we can do different colors of beards and things like that but we can also give him a a prince like uh, purple glove which I'm sure he he, he would need oh, it's maybe not the right pen to be using here but uh, if we mess around with the pens and things then we can we can get this going you can also doodle on it um, and make notes uh, about things if I was going to say and uh, uh, highlight here and that's where we're going to put uh, this print glove and, and I don't really like that line that I've drawn so I can actually erase it altogether which is kind of nice so it's it's not just photographs and things you can play about with you can take a freeze frame from a video and then mess around with it uh, cut bits and pieces out this last few on rectangle right uh, oops you can hit that to save and there we go so we now have a picture of Mr. Litchfield with a nice little beard then of course you can also uh, access all of the phone's features from the the drop down whilst you're in a video which is kind of nice um, not all uh, video utilities allow you to do that on devices you can also slide your hand across like this and it'll take a screenshot it's a little gesture that um, I don't think it's, there's too much of a hubbub being made about it, but it's kind of handy. This uh, this is the dual screen 
uh, applications that you can use. It's, it's a really nice feature that I'm starting to use more and more. Uh, this little menu, if you hold down the, the back button, it'll appear and it allows you to be able to view two applications on screen at the same time. So we can watch a YouTube video in one whilst watching a YouTube video in another. That can make you twice as productive, I think. It's a real show off just to the phone's capabilities of how, of how uber fast this phone is that it's able to do this sort of thing two at the same time. It's quite swanky. You can also uh, change the size of the videos and switch them around and things as to which way you want to see things. And uh, all the little bits and pieces get resized on the screen. It's it's really it's a fantastic addition to the phone. And it means that you really don't need to jump about quite as often uh, between applications whenever you can do this. There, it doesn't support every application, this function, at the moment. But uh, with any luck in the future, you will be able to. Applying this sort of thing to a tablet will see people being an awful lot more productive uh, and you can also edit them like this take a screenshot and there we go and we can start playing around and coloring in my buddy Tony there and his wife it's uh, terribly handy this is uh, this is pretty much a killer feature on the phone uh, I, I imagine we'll see an awful lot more phones doing this as well However, using the stylus in conjunction with this really makes everything a lot more attractive. You also get a barometer, which uh, Samsung have included themselves, and you get Samsung Suggest. It's a, it's essentially a, a collection of applications that that are they suggest for the phone. Uh, for example, here you've got the best S Pen applications, and you can uh, you can fire through them and. and you know they're basically just drawing tools and things like that. That uh, it only goes to show that the the S Pen isn't being left behind. It's uh, it's not just a a little gimmick that's been thrown in this. It's been actively supported, not just by Samsung but by uh, by other people out there as well. So uh, drawing tools and all those sorts of things, and you can produce this. Yeah, see, I I made this earlier. Uh, this is a rather beautiful work of art that I just threw together using the S Pen and the, the pastel color palette. Most of these will tend to link through to Google Play or the Samsung have their own app store as well. Samsung have also gone as far to try to replace Google now with their own uh, voice activation thing, but it's, it's nowhere near as accurate or as handy as Google now. TouchWiz is a lot less intrusive than other Android overlays. There is much to personalize here and it's optimized to get the most out of the S Pen. So if you do add a, a different overlay, you'll probably lose some of that. Of course, with a 5.5 inch screen, gaming is going to be fantastic. And for example, here with Real Racing 2, it's a beautiful big screen to be mucking around with. The visuals look incredible and are ultra sharp thanks to that uh, high resolution, 720 resolution. The, the colors are, are very, very poppy and uh, Playing this game um, through a video camera viewfinder, it's it's quite difficult. So I'm um, I'm better at this game than it appears here. The application doesn't feel like it's uh, stretching the the game screen to to fit onto this screen. It it all looks pin sharp and things. Whenever you take this and compare it to the likes of say the Galaxy Nexus here, you know, the Galaxy Nexus has a big screen, but this one is is massive by comparison. It's it's one of the most game friendly uh, screens on, on the market I mean look at the new iPhone 5 this is a 4 inch screen it's tiny <laughs> now the camera on this device is, a, is an 8 megapixel camera it's pretty much exactly the same as what you get on the S3 uh, on the front there is a it's a 2 megapixel or sorry it's 1.9 megapixel camera as opposed to the S3 which has a 2 megapixel camera there's a bit of a difference there who knows why uh, there's little it's bits and pieces in here that are quite nice. For example, the black and white with a blue filter on it that picks up just blue items. And then you can also do the, the green one as well. I've got a rather uh, old copy of Reanimator here on DVD, which is in, in a green box. The Xbox games were just too far away. Uh, it's 
nice little feature that you'll probably use maybe once in the lifespan of the phone unless you're a budding photographer but it's a, it's a little thing that Samsung's thrown in here and it's just a nice idea a nice fun way to do things cartoonify and black and white uh, sepia and negative which uh, is handy never used it myself but some people might do the video camera shoots in 720p it's quite nice um, here you can see the actual video quality, this is footage from the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 uh, filming the iPhone 5 here. It's serviceable, um, I have to hit the screen here just to get it to focus in on that, but it, it's quite crisp, it, it does a formidable job. Um, there, there's not really anything you can fault it about, the colours are, whilst these are bland colours, they're, they're quite nice. Suppose while I have them here, I'll just do a bit of a comparison between them because the Galaxy Nexus is obviously one of the bigger phones on the market at the moment, and the Note just is almost twice the size. Then the iPhone 5 is a it looks like a dinky little child's phone by comparison. Now the the 5 has the larger four-inch screen. It's it's a beautiful phone. Um, it's it's very nice and pocketable, but the uh, the Note 2 looks like a big bruiser by comparison. They're not a million miles away from each other through their design, but the iPhone 5 does feel much better in hand. After two weeks of using it, I love the Galaxy Note 2. It, it is my main device now. It's taken over somewhat from using the Galaxy Nexus and using the Galaxy Tab. Uh, I'm a big Android user, and for me this is almost the perfect device. Of course this device isn't for everyone. There have been a couple of trade-offs to keep the price down. The screen isn't as sharp as the S3, however, it has a 1.6 GHz quad-core processor and 2 GB of RAM to keep things running butterily smooth. I will keep this as my main device for the foreseeable future and recommend that you check this one out. Thanks for watching.